Hey everybody, this is round two of my playthrough of Local Heroes in the Burnt Offerings uh, adventure of the Rise of the Rune Lords Pathfinder adventure card game. Last time, Sioni managed to close down the general store, which is good, just by exhausting the deck. It took a while. In this, this round, I think I'm going to send Valeros over to the waterfront, which, just to warn you, I'm, I'm, I'm bending the rules a little bit. You might say expanding, and I'm using some cards from the Skulls and Shackle set in the waterfront. There are meaner monsters, so actually it's 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 sort of detrimental to me, not beneficial. But it's just so much more thematic to use Skull and Shackles on the waterfront than the standard Rise of the Rune Lord set. So I have I've, I've expanded the the scope of this a little bit. Technically speaking, Skulls and Shackles is not compatible with Rise of the Rune Lords. This is not something that's officially supported by this game. I'm doing it because I'm being adventurous and thematic. It's the rule of cool, as we say in RPG world. So we are going to increment the timer deck, or decrement, and... Yeah, I think we'll just... Oh, well, I guess we should look at the, the location. When using a weapon, subtract one from each die rolled. After your exploration, you may discard two cards to explore again. This place is rubbish. So Valeros is at a distinct disadvantage because he's going to be rolling with a negative one penalty to everything, apparently. And to close the location, you have to summon and defeat a bandit henchman. This is horrible. Uh, and so that's because it's a weapon, right? Yeah, okay. So, um, Waterfront. The bustling waterfront houses many of the community's shops and industries and serves as one of the primary gateways for travelers. Among the masts and colors of foreign ships, shipbuilding and fishermen rub shoulders with sailors and visitors from across the world. Strangers who always bring with them exotic cargo and wild stories. Knowing that there's a penalty to being on the waterfront makes me rethink my decision to have Sioni uh, go to the academy next. I may not have her go to the academy. I might have her join Valeros here and really try to clear out this location, but that's just thinking ahead. First, it's Valeros' turn. Uh, he has to explore, so let's have him explore. And this is one of the cards from the Skulls and Shackles set. This is the Becalmed Barrier. Requiring a wisdom or survival check, there's no way Valeros is going to check is going to defeat that. If undefeated, dis display this barrier next to the location deck. You may not move or be moved from this location while this barrier is next to it. When this location has no other cards, banish the card. Okay. This is inconvenient, but really all it does is lock us into the waterfront. Which, I mean, if, if he fails, which I think he's going to fail. Because I don't know if any potion of hiding is a stealth. That won't do him any good in this case. So he has to do a wisdom save. And he's got a d4 wisdom. Not possible to get a, an 8 on a d4. So he's locked into this location. No matter what now. He could discard two cards to explore. I don't know why anyone would take Waterfront up on that offer. Um, I'm going to instead just pass it over to Sioni and have Sioni come over here to the waterfront with him. Now, I don't know if that means that she is now locked into this location as well, but I'm assuming... I mean, there's nothing tying this to his character, so I'm assuming that if you enter the waterfront, you are now locked in the waterfront because of the becalmed barrier. That's what I'm assuming. I, I could be wrong. Uh, we've turned over a card, so yeah, she's going to explore now. And she finds an ally, which means if she gains this ally, she could attempt to close this location. Unfortunately, this ally also takes a wisdom and survival check of 8. So her wisdom skill is a d6, so she's unable to get that. However, does she have anything that could help? Um, no, I don't think she does. She's got an acolyte who can help with arcane and divine. She's got a toad that'll help with getting a spell back. She's got a fortitude check, which is useless. 
so yeah, there's nothing here that will help her gain an, uh, gain this particular ally. So Skulls and Shackles has not been good to me. So I'll put that back in my Skulls and Shackles deck. So they lost that ally. Now I feel like there's a rule about what happens if you fail to acquire an ally. If you encounter an ally, you may immediately attempt to ch to close the location. If you fail to acquire, discard the top card of the Blessings deck. Yeah, so that that cost her pretty dearly. So that's one timer card gone. She that's her turn. That's all she can do. Not great. Not a great turn. So we'll increment the card, the, the timer, we'll hand it over to Valeros, and it's another ally. This could be good. This is an ally from the right set, first of all. And then this is um, either Diplomacy or Strength and Melee. Diplomacy for Valeros isn't bad. It is a d6 plus 2, but... It's a six. He 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 needs a six. So it'd be a four on a d6. His strength and melee, of course, is a d10 plus three, but he needs an eight. So um, there's probably math I could do here to calculate which one is better, but this one feels better, so I'm gonna do it. I guess I should have done the math. Uh, so he failed. He failed to get that. So once again, we're just going through this timer deck like it doesn't even matter. Um, and it does matter. If we run out of timer cards, the game's over. So I'm getting really nervous here. Um, okay. That's fine. We'll, we'll keep going. Uh, so we're gonna... Did I just... Uh, yeah. So now I'm passing it over to Sione. She's still got six cards, right? Yeah. Um, passing it over to Sione. She's going to explore. I wonder what she'll find. Another ally. This could be good. Um, she has Charisma and Diplomacy. She's got a... I think she's got a bonus to Diplomacy as well. Yeah, Diplomacy is plus two. Her Charisma die is a d12. So to acquire this Burglar, she needs a six on a d... No, she needs a four on a d12. Well, that's cracked. It could be a one. Uh, or it could be a two. So either way... She fails her Charisma check to acquire this. I'm shocked. She never fails Charisma checks. Shocked, shocked, shocked. Timer deck. Incremented as a penalty. Um, incrementing it for Valeros' turn. Exploring. All right. A monster. At least we can fight. At least Valeros can, can try to kill this monster. This is, again, a monster from Skulls and Shackles, so it's not actually from this card deck. But I threw it in there because it's thematic. The Bull Shark may not be evaded. That's okay, Valeros didn't want to evade. Before you act, succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 9 check, or take 1d4 damage. Well, he's got nothing to help him with that, so he's going to make a Constitution check. Constitution is a D8 for him. So, let's see what happens. Six. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. It was a fortitude. It was Constitution 9. There was no way he could have ch succeeded on that. So he's meant to take 1D4 damage before the combat even begins. And so that's a three. What can I do to mitigate anything? Uh, well, I do have this shield to reduce damage by two. So... I'm going to recharge the shield and only take one point of damage. And the point of damage will be this potion of hiding, I think. Actually, you know what? I think the point of damage is going to be this short sword. Because I've got a bastard sword in my hand. Why would I why would I opt to use a short sword over that? Okay, so now we're in combat. And of course, Valeros has a plus three automatically for his melee. So he needs to roll a 10 on not 1, but 2d10, because he's revealing his bastard sword, which adds a d10 to combat. So that's a 6, it looks like. Is that a 6? Oops. Is that a 6? Yes, that is a 6. So a 4 or greater on this die will succeed, 
and he fails by two. So that means that this monster goes back into the deck as undefeated. And Valeros gets to discard two cards from his hand. That's really bad. I mean, like, really, really bad. This is... This waterfront is a lot more brutal than I realized, and we can't leave because of this barrier. Not a great round. Okay, so Valeros is going to draw back up to four cards at the end of his turn, and I'm going to look at what they are because I really... Okay, this is good. At least we've got a D8 bonus. Yeah, so we've got some weapons, we got some more armor, so that's... He definitely needs that. I feel like that's a good thing. And now I'll just turn the card over and switch over to uh, Sioni. And she's going to continue to explore. Great. Another barrier. All right. And this, again, this is from the wrong set. This is from Skull and Shackles, not Rise of the Rune Lord. I'm doing it because I'm playing on hard mode, essentially. So I could do a Dexterity Disable check. Eight. Or a Wisdom Perception. Well, I do believe... For once, we've actually got something in our hand. Nope, we don't. I thought I had a burglar. I guess we don't. Okay. Well, then I don't think I have anything to help me with either of those two checks. Yeah, I don't. So let's see what this one says. If undefeated, you're dealt 1d4 plus 1 combat, and each other character at the location is dealt 1 combat, then recharge your hand. Okay. Recharging the hand actually would not be bad. So she has to do either Dexterity or Wisdom. Well, there's no way for her to get the Wisdom. Ten Wisdom, she can't do. Dexterity eight, she has a fighting chance. She has a D8. The way I've been rolling so far today is un not going to be reflective of what I just rolled. So great, she actually succeeds. No damage is taken, and... This goes back into the Skull and Shackles deck, uh, ideally never to be seen again. Those Skull and Shackles, that that is that is definitely hard mode. Um, I mean, there's a reason that they say don't mix the, the, the decks, but um, I just I couldn't resist. Okay, so let's see. Uh, that's good. So, yeah. Um, the timer deck is looking really scary right now. I'm really, really not happy about this situation. But there's nothing I can do other than advance the card, switch over to Valeros, and he'll explore. This is a jellyfish cape item. If he can do a constitution fortitude 8, he could gain that cape. Can he possibly do that? Constitution is a d8, so technically yes, he could do that. It's unbelievable. He actually acquired the item. So he can recharge this card to succeed at a constitution or fortitude check to defeat a bane with the aquatic trait. But he can discard this card to add a 1d6 electricity to any check to defeat a monster with the aquatic feat, uh, trait. Okay. Well, you know, we know that we have a shark. That jellyfish cape could actually be handy if he comes up against a shark again. Uh, so I think I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, discard this dagger because that, and I have to discard at the end of his turn down to four. So I'm advancing the timer deck, turning it over to Sioni, and she's exploring, and she finds a sea scourge. The sea scourge is immune to acid, mental, and poison. Okay, before you act, each character at location must succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude eight, or be dealt two acid damage. Okay. Well, interestingly, Valeros just gained a card that he can recharge to succeed at a fortitude check with an aquatic trait, and that has aquatic. So he's going to recharge this cape. So he succeeds, takes no damage. Sioni, uh, there's no way she's going to succeed that, unfortunately. She doesn't have anything to succeed with that. So she's just going to get two acid damage straight away. She does have Bracers of Protection. She's got 
that's it. Bracers of protection. So she can recharge this to take her damage down to one. And then for her damage, she will discard, I think, this... Oh, wait, what is this? Potion of Fortitude. Banish this card and choose a character to succeed at a Fortitude check. Oh, okay. And that's Fortitude. Okay, well, guess what? She's not going to... Um, she's not going to do that. She'll keep her Bracers of Protection. She'll banish this card. Banishing means putting it back in the box. So she, is, she has consumed that potion. It is gone forever. Well, I mean, it's back in the box, so it could turn back up. But yeah, it's it's gone from her hand forever. Uh, and so she succeeds at the fortitude check. But she still has to go to battle with this thing, and it is a, a creature that requires 12 to defeat. So she's going to have to do something. Um, so these blast stones are kind of useless in a way. You banish it for a D, uh, bonus to d4. Well, she and Valeros are in the same location, so Valeros can give her a d4 for free without her banishing a card. So I am, therefore, going to discard that card. Take his... Actually, you know what? Wait a minute. Instead of doing that, I could use up this card. I could banish this and give her a d4 bonus. And then she's using her art. No, she's not using her arcane. That's why I was going to banish that card or discard that card. So in order for her to be able to attack at all, because she has no attack spells right now, but she has a special ability that if you discard a card, she can cast an arcane spell. So this will be arcane plus three for her. No, plus two for her arcana for her arcane bonus. And then Valeros, oh, plus d6 for this particular spell, because that's part of her ability. And then Valeros can add a d4 for her combat for free. So she needs a uh, il, uh, a 10, a 10 on all of these die, between all of these die. One on a d4 is not a great start. One on a d6 is a, not a great start, so that's two, three, four. So she really, really needs a 6 on this d12. No, she needs a so 10, 9, 8. She needs an 8 or better. Okay. 3. Wow. Rubbish, rubbish rolls. Okay. So she got a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So she has to take a lot of damage. Whew, boy. Oh, she could have used invisibility to evade that, too. It's so frustrating. Except, I mean, it's going to have to get faced eventually. Okay, so she's got to discard all of these these cards. I mean, she could recharge this. Ooh, that's what she's going to do. Recharge this. Who cares, really, what it does to, um, to her actual state? Because, um... Well, yeah, there, there's a lot of recharging I probably should have done there, um, but I didn't. So she's discarding those cards, and now she has to draw back up to her hand of six cards. Three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's an interesting hand. Um, I don't know where her attack spells are. Did they get discarded or something? No, her, her force missile's still in there somewhere. It's just she doesn't have it. So this is undefeated. Um, but she has tried to defeat it. Which means that Valeros can now try to defeat it as well. So Valeros, of course, has a d10 plus 3 for his melee. And he's got some kind of weapon. He's got a mace that he can reveal to add a d8 to his to his melee. That's not bad to get 12. One on a d8. I need to quit while I'm ahead today. This is so bad. Uh, so he needs, uh, I don't know, a big number. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. He finally did it. 
Yeah, yeah, he did it. Cool. Wow, that's hard. Like I said, using cards, you know, outside of the deck is is really not supported. And so I'm using the Skull and Shackles for thematic purposes at the waterfront. And um, it has served its purpose. It has definitely made the scenario a little bit harder. Okay, so I've got just three cards left at the waterfront, so I may as well power through this and try to close the location. It is actually Sione's turn. She's drawn back up. Okay, so now it is Valeros's turn. He only has three cards because he took some damage previously. But he gets to explore. It's probably another monster. It is. Giant Wasp is immune to mental, don't care. After you act, it's going to deal one poison damage no matter what. Okay. Well, we have Chainmail to reduce that damage, so that'll be good. And we got a Mace to add a D8 to our attack. So we've got a D8, got a D10, plus an automatic 3. So we need, um, a, we need 10 across these two die. Three, not a great start again. So I need a uh, big number on this three. Wow. So three, six, nine. That's four points of damage for Valeros. All of his cards discarded, and the Wasp is undefeated. So it just goes right back into the the deck. I guess it's silly to 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 shuffle three cards, but I don't know. Um, okay, so that's the end of his turn. So he draws back up to four. He's got a shield, a blessing, a long sword, and another blessing. So that's, I guess, good. Increment the timer, switch it over to Sioni, explore. Canopy Creeper. The Canopy Creeper is immune to electricity, mental, and poison. If the oh wait did that wasp that wasp uh, deals one point of damage unconditionally oh it doesn't matter he discarded his whole hand and after that you just ignore the damage okay so canopy creeper canopy creeper is immune yeah if the check to defeat has the cold or slashing you get to add a d8 well she does not have cold or slashing after you act you have to succeed at wisdom perception ten or the difficulty of the check to defeat the creeper, oh, before you act, is increased by 3. That would be a 15. Well, that's monumental. And I don't see how we can succeed on that. Strength, uh, survival. Bury this blessing of Lamash to, to add 2 dice to a check to defeat the monster. What are we looking for here? for a wisdom or a perception. So none of that applies here. Wisdom or perception. Okay. So let's, let's so we can bury this card to add two dice to a check to defeat a monster. That's awfully appealing. I just wish I knew what two dice meant. The way I've been playing it is that it's just the die that you're rolling, which in her case will will be a d12. So that would be 2d12 to defeat a monster, or 3d12 total to defeat this monster, which seems like what it will take. Uh, it's just really a question of which options I want to use to my advantage. So wisdom or perception. Her wisdom die is... A d6. So I'll discard a Blessings of the Gods to add another d6 to her Wisdom roll. And she's got a 4. So that fails. So the difficulty of this creature is 15. Well, that's going to be difficult for anyone to to defeat. Now she's got to attack this, I can, I can generate, I can discard Blessings of the Gods to give her a d12 plus a bonus of a d uh, of, of 2 
because she's got an arcane bonus. So her arcane die plus two. Uh, and then Valeros is here, so he can add a d4 to the attack. And then uh, that attack itself uh, adds a d6. So she would be rolling a d6 and a d4 and a d12 in hopes of getting a 15. I could see that happening. You know, she could roll a 12 on the on the d12 and then just do anything on the other die. But I'm pretty nervous about that, and I, I would rather defeat this creature than see it continue to be in this deck. So I'm going to expend the Blessing of Lamash to bury it. So we won't see this card again, but she does get to add two die to this check. We'll cross the bridge of what that actually means when we get there. Okay, so she just rolled a 2 on her d4 from Valeros. So that's 4. And then she'll roll her d6. She got a 3, so she's now up to 7. And now she'll roll her d12. She just rolled an 8. 8 plus 7 is actually 15, so she defeats this creature. Didn't really need the Lamash 2 blessing, um, but but uh, we used it just in case, uh, so it is buried. I almost put it into her discard pile. It's not, it's not right, so um, that is defeated. That was really hard. After this, after this location is finally closed, if that ever happens, we can go to the Academy. The Academy has zero monsters there, and we can just cycle through some some cards to try to get everyone back up to something reasonable. So she's got three cards, so she has to draw back up to three. So her... she has zero health left. <laughs> she's not dead, she just doesn't have any health left. If it comes to the point where she has to draw from her discard pile, she dies. That's it. So we're in a very, very precarious situation for everybody involved. But Valeros is here. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. He's the tank. Hopefully he'll be able to get through this. Turn over a timer deck card. And Valeros draws the shark. When Before you start, succeed at a constitution or fortitude 9 or... 1d4 damage gets dealt to you. Well, there's no way he's going to succeed at that. Uh, he could discard a blessing to try to get another wisdom die. Or no, constitution. Oh, constitution. Well, it's still... I don't know if that's going to be worth it. Because I would want a guarantee. Um, yeah, I think we'll just auto-fail that. Roll a d4 for to see how much damage is going to get dealt. It's two. So what Valeros is going to do in response to that is play the shield, which he gets to recharge. So that negates two points of damage, so no damage was taken. Now Valeros has to go to battle with this thing and get a 13 to defeat it. That 13 is going to happen, hopefully, on a d10 plus three for his melee bonus, and a d8 for his longsword. So we're looking for a 10 between these two die. 4, so now a 6 or better on the d10, and that is an 8. So he has defeated the shark. Okay, so we know what this is. It's a monster, uh, some kind of monster. So Valerius is going to uh, deal up, and I have a feeling that I might just discard this card so that he can explore. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have him discard his ally so that he can explore for free, because I kind of want him to go into combat with this giant wasp rather than Sioni. After you act, you're gonna get he's going to get one poison damage, so it's a 13 again. So once again, he's got an automatic 3, he's got his d10, he's got his d8, and I'm kind of feeling like I might actually just discard 
a blessing to ensure that he gets a 10. Or maybe not. Yeah, let's risk it. It's a five. So he needs a, uh, yeah, five or better on this d10. And he got another eight. So he defeated the wasp. That was brutal. Shockingly brutal. When closing, summon and defeat a bandit henchman. I don't really want to do that either. Okay, so a bandit henchman is here. When you summon a card, this is the when you summon a card, um, you don't you don't do any of the uh, I believe you don't do any of the powers, but I could be wrong. Um, so I guess we'll just do it just because, just in case I'm wrong. So I'm supposed to recharge a card. Well, that's, that I can do. So I'll just expend a blessing. A recharge. And now this bandit henchman is merely an eight. <laughs> um, compared to the sharks and other things that we have battled, uh, this just doesn't feel like a real combat. Uh, Valeros gets a free three for his melee. His melee die, his strength die is a d10, and uh, he has a long sword that grants him an extra d8. So he needs a five across these two die. He got a two. It's not bad. It's not as great as I would have preferred, but okay. Uh, so now he needs a three or more on his d10, and he got a two. So he does not defeat the bandit. Three, four, five, six, seven. There's nothing else, right, that I can do. That's, yeah. So he did not defeat this bandit. And he takes one point of damage. So he's going to discard his the blessing. So now m the question that I, I have to ask myself is whether he should just... Well, I, no, I guess that's not a question. So he failed. So this question... Location is still open. We have to close all the locations. That's the win condition of this scenario. To win this scenario, close all locations. So we're going to tick over a timer card. It is now Sioni's turn. So now she has to attempt to close this location. So she summons the bandit. Well, she doesn't have any attack spells, if I recall correctly. Yeah, she doesn't. Oh, she does now. Cool. All right, so force missile. She can recharge this to do a her arcane die and two d4, and then uh, Valeros adds a d4 to her to her um, attack for free. So it's recharged. Um, so she has a two for her arcane bonus. So she needs to roll a six across her d12 and. 3d4. So really, I mean, she only needs to roll like a 2 or something on this thing. Well, she got a 12. So um, she slaughters the henchman with powerful magic. Or the, not the henchman. Yeah, the, the henchman, the bandit. Um, and the waterfront is finally closed. That was a brutal, brutal location. I didn't expect it to be quite that brutal, but I was using, as I've said before, Skull and Shackles cards, which is not really compatible with this. They tell you not to do it. I ignored their advice, and I don't regret it. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, then again, we are down to zero health for Sioni, and we're down a lot of cards for uh, Valeros. I forgot to draw back up to his card. To, to his deck size, his hand size. He's doing all right, though, but not not great. I mean, he's he doesn't have all that much left. So what we're going to do next time is absolutely go to a more or less safe space, which, I mean, there's one monster. Okay, I didn't even realize there was one, and one barrier at the academy. So there there are some obstacles, but, you know, otherwise there are lots of spells, and an item and an ally. So 
I I have a feeling that if we play our cards right, so to speak, we'll be able to maybe stock up a little bit in on, on their hands and and maybe get some more cards into their discard piles. But that will be Valeros's turn next time to go to the academy. Once again, I don't know. I might actually split the difference there. I might have Valeros go to the woods and Sioni go to the academy. Because there are lots of dangers in the woods, but I feel like Valeros could probably withstand that. Whereas Sioni will probably be better at the academy. And I don't... I would rather Sioni encounter spells than Valeros, because Valeros is not going to get them. He's not going to acquire them, almost certainly. Anyway, that's something to worry about next time. Thank you very much for watching.